Okay, here we're going to learn a little bit more about the DNA molecule. We see on this side the characteristic double helix shape. And then as we progress to here, we see our nucleotides binding together. Uh, we know that this is a DNA molecule because of the presence of thymine, thymine to adenine, guanine to cytosine. Yeah, but we're going to focus a little bit more as, as the specific binding that's occurring. Now you will notice uh, arrows going from 5 down to 3 prime. And here from, again, 5 prime pointing to 3 prime one pointing down, one pointing up. This is where DNA gets the term anti-parallel. We'll talk more about that when we do DNA replication. Moving on to the double helix molecule, what's holding these two strands together is actually hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds between thymine and adenine, they are two hydrogen bonds holding those nucleotides together. The nucleotides guanine and cytosine are held together by three bonds, three hydrogen bonds in particular. So while two bonds is strong enough to hold the two strands together, of course, three bonds are stronger than two bonds. The way to kind of remember this is C has this curved shape, as does G. They have a similar curved shape, therefore they're by bind tighter and stronger, so there's three hydrogen bonds. A and T, remember, only has two. We see that depicted here. These hydrogen bonds hold the bases together. Where there's a thymine and adenine, we see two bonds. Where there's a cytosine and guanine, we see three bonds. Keep in mind, we can identify this as DNA because of the presence of thiamine. Now, these hydrogen bonds are important. While the hydrogen bonds are biology's weak bond, it's a good thing that they're weak. It makes it very easy to unzip the double helix for replication. Also for reading different genes that we want to replicate. But then, it allows for an easy rezip to kind of store and keep our double helix, our DNA structure, together. It's very important that it doesn't fall apart because it is the genetic information. So we want these hydrogen bonds to kind of allow to open up a section of DNA to recopy or read a gene, and then we want them to kind of reseal up so that we don't lose our DNA structure. Now copying and replicating DNA, there's two strands of DNA helix are complementary. Remember, that does not mean they're identical. One becomes a template of the other, and each can be a template to replicate the whole molecule. What does that mean is where we have a G, there'll be a C down here. A C to a G, an A to a U, because in this case, we are making an RNA. So the reason why we call them not identical is it's complementary. It's what does G bind with C? What does C bind with G? This is why it's called a complementary strand. This is a template strand. This is binding here. And in this case, so this is a double um, helix of RNA, because we see two uracils with no thiamine present. So an interesting note is that the ratio of A to T and G to C affects the stability of the DNA molecule, as I mentioned. Two bonds versus three bonds. A to T, remember, has two bonds. G to C has three bonds. For biotech procedures, the more G to C bonds, the higher the temperature is needed to separate out the strands. If we talk about DNA and separating out a double um, helix strand here, there's a lot of G and C bonds. There's going to be more or higher temperature required to be able to separate that out. Many organisms that can withstand high temperatures have many G to C bonds within their DNA molecule. Lastly here, when does our DNA replicate? Well, it replicates when our cells go to, uh, to reproduce, to produce identical copies here, in the case of mitosis, and gamete production, the production of um, sperm or egg or pollen grains through the process of meiosis. So this is when we're kind of particularly want to break those bonds to kind of reformulate to carry on that genetic information to the next generation, whether it be through gametes, through the process here of pollen or sperm cells or egg cells, or producing identical copies of our cells.